Robert Thomas with Photoblog Stop, and today's video tutorial will be on how to adjust the white balance of your digital images in Adobe Photoshop. To begin with, um, we want to set the black point, the white point, and the gray point for this image. And when we do that, we're going to place those points on their own individual curves layers. So let's begin by setting the black point for this image. I'll come down here to the lower right of the screen, I'll click on the Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, and then select Threshold. In the Threshold dialog box, there's an adjustment slider here in the middle, and I'm going to slide that all the way to the left. And then I will slowly begin to bring it back to the right until some blacks appear. And this would be about right for me, my, the way I work, but I want to mention that some people, when they use this technique, they make the mistake of stopping when they see just a few black specks on the screen with the hopes that they'll get a more accurate black point. And the truth of it is, that's not the best way to work. Um, the reason being is that these first few blacks that appear on the screen will more often than not ha not have any color information in them. That is to say, they will be that will have RGB values of 0, 0, and 0. They won't be actually black. They will just be void of any color information. And as such, they will be void of the color contamination that we're trying to correct. So that being said, this is not the way to do it. We need to continue to move our adjustment slider to the right until we see some significant blacks appear in the image. And for my purposes, I would say that's a good place right about there. Um, the next thing to do is to use the color sampler tool and you can find that over here on the left. Uh, you might not see it on your computer. Uh, to see it and select it you would have to click on the eyedropper tool and hold with your mouse button until the menu comes up and then the second item down you'll see the color sampler tool. So we want to select that. And then there's, there's two little tips I want to give, share with you. Um, the first is I want to zoom in on this image so I have a better idea of where I'm clicking. And the easiest way that I've found to do that is to simply press and hold the Z key and then click with your mouse to zoom in. When I release the Z key, you'll see we still have the color sampler tool active. That's one reason I like that technique. Uh, the other tip I wanted to share with you is that right now you're on the screen you're seeing the default color sampler uh, tool sampler tool and um, wh whenever I'm working close up like this I like to use a different version of the tool and you get to that other version by uh, clicking or holding clicking on the cap locks key and when you do that you notice how the cursor changed that, that in my opinion is a more accurate cursor I'll turn off cap locks. I'll turn on cap locks. So with this more accurate selection tool, I'm going to click here in the blocks once with my mouse to set a color sampler point for the black point. Once that's been done, uh, the next step is to add a curves adjustment layer. And if you see this green back arrow on the display, you click that once and that brings you back to the main menu. And then here is the curves icon. So if we click on that once, we will add the curves adjustment layer. Now once we've added this curves adjustment layer, we need to delete the threshold layer that we created. So I'll click once to highlight it. On a Mac, I'll use delete to remove it. On Windows, that would be the backspace key. And then I'll click once on this curves adjustment layer to make sure it is still active. In the uh, Curves dialog box, you'll see we have three eyedropper icons. And these icons represent adjustment tools for the black point, the gray point, and the white point. Right now, we're adjusting the black point for this image, so I'm going to click once on the black point eyedropper. And then I'll come over to my image and I'll hover directly over the color sampler point we set for our black point. And I will click once with my mouse to place that. 
and you'll notice that in the curves adjustment layer the curve has been slightly modified and that indicates that yes the change has been made to the curve and that takes care of setting our black point the next uh, step is to set the white point for our image I'm going to hold the Z key down and on a Mac press and hold option on Windows it would be alt and when I click with my mouse I will zoom out and we want to um, click on the create a new fill or adjustment layer icon and once again select threshold and this time in the threshold dialog box we want to move our adjustment slider all the way to the right and then we want to slowly move it back to the left until we start seeing some whites appear now some of you might already notice that well gee Bob we already have some whites in this image um, no, those are not the whites you want to use. These are um, some blown out whites or highlights uh, from some windows that are in this image. And uh, we do not want to use those as our whites for this image or this adjustment. Uh, namely because they, they don't contain the information we want. Just like the blacks didn't, these whites don't either. Um, the same could be said for uh, specular highlights. Uh, for example, there might be a person uh, looking at the camera when you took the photo and there might be a catch light in their eye that catch light would be considered a specular highlight that we don't want to use as our white point uh, the same would apply to any reflections off of glassware so what we'll do is we will take this adjustment slider and we will continue to move it to the left until we see some meaningful whites appear in the image and I would say that's probably pretty good right about there and um, again it would be helpful probably to display just the background layer so that we can see for ourselves what might be white what might not be white in the image and uh, we could click on these visibility uh, layer I icons to turn them off to show the background layer but um, when you start building up a, a a tall layer stack like this, it's, it's often easier to simply uh, hold down the Option key on a Mac or Alt on Windows and click the visibility layer icon on the layer that you want to show. And I just did that and when I do that you can see that all the other layers the visibility is turned off. Now in this image I do recall that this young man had um, a white shirt on so I'm going to focus my efforts on that white shirt. I will hold down the option on a Mac or Alt on Windows and click on the visibility icon again. And in the, um, it looks like I have a pretty good adjustment right now in the threshold dialog box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in once again to get a better idea of what I'm doing. And it looks like I lost my, uh, my color sampler point so I'm going to click on that once more to select that tool and I will click once with my mouse in this white area to place a color sampler point for our white point. Once that's been done we're going to add another curves adjustment layer so I will click on this back pointing arrow and then once again select the curves icon to add a new curves dialog or new curves layer and uh, once again we do have to remove this threshold layer we created so I'll click once to highlight it on uh, Mac I'll press the delete key, on Windows you would press the backspace key and then I'll click once on this uppermost layer to make sure that it is still active. And uh, in our curves dialog box uh, because we're setting the white point this time I will click once on the white point selection icon to select it and then I will place my mouse my selector directly over that uh, second color sampler point that we set for our white point and I will click once and again you can see that the the curves uh, the curve has changed quite a bit this time in our our curves dialog box alright so that takes care of setting the black point and the white point for our image uh, the next step is to set the gray point and it's very similar to what we've already done with the white and black points uh, but there is two intermediate steps that we need to do first uh, the first step would be to create a new layer. Uh, you can do that by clicking on the add a new layer icon down below or you could use the keyboard shortcut uh, 
shift command n on a mac or shift control n for a windows computer and uh, once we have this new layer we want to fill this layer with 50 percent gray and the shortcut for that would be shift delete on a mac or shift backspace on windows and I just did that and up comes the fill dialog box and what we want to do is we want to fill this new layer with 50 percent gray so select that option and then click on OK to accept your changes as you can see the layer has filled with 50 percent gray and the next step now is to and this is an important step we need to change the blend mode of this layer to difference so up here in the top of the layers panel I will click that arrow there and come down to select difference and I'll click on that. Okay, um, now we've, we've basically added a new layer, set the fill to 50% gray, and changed the blend mode to difference. And now we'll proceed as usual and we will add a uh, another threshold layer. So I'll click down below here on the create a new fill or adjustment layer icon and select threshold and I'm going to press and hold the Z and hold down option alt on a windows to zoom out a bit so I can see more of what I'm working with and in the threshold dialog box we're going to drag the adjustment slider all the way to the left and then slowly bring it back to the right um, now in for setting the black point and the white point I mentioned that we need to move it pretty far over till we get some meaningful blacks or meaningful whites but when we're setting the gray point, that's not important because really the only colors you're going to see on the screen are going to be gray. You're not going to see blacks, you're not going to see anything else. Uh, so uh, it, you can move it just a little bit till you get some, some small inkling of darkness on your screen. And that should be uh, sufficient for setting your gray point. You seem to be having a hard time here, but. Um, let me just set it manually to 3. And I'm going to press and hold the Z key to zoom in. And I will, once again, I lost my color sampler tool, so I'll select that again. And I will place the cursor over one of these gray areas, and I will click once with my mouse to set the gray point. And now that that's done, we will add another curves adjustment layer. So I'll click on this back arrow and then once again click on the curves icon to add a curves adjustment layer and very important once again we need to delete the threshold layer that we created and we also need to delete the 50 percent fill layer and then I will click on the uppermost layer once to make sure it's still active and in the curves dialog box we're going to be working with the we're setting the gray point, so I will click once to select the gray point selection icon. And then I will move my cursor over the gray point that we selected earlier. And I will click once to select that. And that is, that's it. <laughs> you now have three individual curves layer, each with their own, uh, the black, white, and gray point selected. I'm going to zoom out of the image a bit here give you a better idea of what we've done and then I'll hold down option on a Mac alt on Windows and click on this layer visibility icon for the background layer to show you the before and the after so once again here is the before and the after alright well that takes care of today's video tutorial on adjusting the white balance in Photoshop thank you very much for watching and uh, please remember to visit photoblogstop.com where you'll find um, a collection of various Photoshop and photography tutorials.